Hey, how is it going, everybody? I just wanted to uh, introduce you guys to the, this brand new podcast that I am kicking off. Got an awesome guest uh, with me today, Adam Mikoff, who's a uh, one of the senior recruiters over at IQ Talent Partners. Uh, what this podcast is going to focus on is uh, just like the su su successful things that we're doing in our roles to be to you know either win work, you know, find the right people for our customers you know, make the placements, new marketing ideas. The world is constantly changing as, as we all know from 2020 going into 2021 and it's just trying to keep up with everything. So uh, uh, definitely thank you, Adam, for uh, joining me today. And uh, Adam, you're over at uh, IQ Talent Partners. Can you tell me a little bit real quick about what you're doing over there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, IQ Talent Partners is probably closer to what I would say the, the RPO model of recruiting, uh, basically. Okay. Um, they go out, we get clients that have an exclusive recruiting project they want us to work on. So not your traditional contingency recruiter, but not a corporate recruiter. We kind of fall in that <laughs> in between um, part. So uh, yeah, so I've been doing that for two years now. Uh, been, I've been fortunate to work on quite a few clients. And uh, I, I know recently you moved over to a new one. You, you were telling me earlier. Yeah, I did. I always tell people I get to work on the, I say it's the craziest, coolest thing I've ever been able to say in my life. I, um, I'm a recruiting consultant right now for a company called MyCoworks. Uh, and what they've actually done is they have found a way to grow a fungus, send it through a process. And on the back end of that process, out comes leather. I don't even know <laughs> what else to say other than that because I am not a scientist. I always joke and say a lot smarter people than I have created this product. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, was, I think I saw in there that uh, recently is raised a series B, like it's looking to kind of like take over the fashion industry. So it seems like a really fast moving organization that you're supporting right now. Yeah, absolutely. So we started a project. Um, well, I was brought on the project on August 24th and their goal was to go from 50 employees on August 24th to 100 by the end of the year. Uh, because yeah yeah right uh every recruiter that's watching this just their eyes perked up like wait a second what did they just say um and uh they're very fortunate we just closed our series they just closed their series b funding raised 45 million oh wow in okay. the biotech space during a pandemic which is extremely impressive um and then we get to attach our name to some really cool investors actually that they they like us to talk about natalie portman and josh john legend are two of their largest investors so it's really i get to say all that's those cool. cool names now too <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, coming up to the end of the year and like, tell me about this crazy, like, you know, trying to get that those many people in the door in a short window in this weird world. So all of the yes to that, like it, it was a, it's a weird time, but we were very fortunate. They had brought in, um, when they brought us in, it was someone that had worked with us in the past at a different client and they brought okay. in as a, as an HR, their head of HR. And she was, she was fantastic about making sure that utilizing us to set up a very scalable, repeatable process for all of our interviews to where us as our recruiting team said, this is what we're going to accomplish. This is how we're going to do it. And hiring managers saying, okay, if you can accomplish that, we're going to follow back up with this, these steps and we will actually do it. It was the greatest thing a recruiter has ever said. I will get you feedback in 24 hours. And I actually got feedback in 24 hours. <laughs> every, right <laughs> every recruiter's like please please <laughs> <laughs> so so we um as we've recruited we actually recruited so fast they started to realize that onboarding they wanted to make sure it was also a very repeatable scalable process so we're not going to reach 100 by the end of the year but that's almost by design now because we realized that we've hired so many strategic roles and so many other roles now they can look at their organization strategically and say where can we put these other neat roles in, these other crucial roles? And okay. we can actually slow down the hiring to be more strategic as opposed to this huge growth spurt that we thought we needed. So uh, it, while we're not going to reach 50 people in four months, I'm okay with that actually because <laughs> we, we've actually done, uh, by the end of the year, I think we're going to be close to 85 people. So we're, we're going to do 35 in four months. I'm extremely impressed with it. To be what honest. kind of roles are those? So... They're anything from marketing to quality technicians, your okay. quality quality people, all the way up to we are um, in the middle of working on um, what they call a distinguished scientist. So, okay. yeah, the that look. I don't exactly know what a distinguished scientist is and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I basically know it's going to be the person that kind of 
if people have technical questions about what's going on with it, this person gets the question. Okay. And they can kind of speak to the business, speak to investors, speak to the world about the product from a okay. scientist standpoint. So we've got to do some really cool role, roles. I mean, fermentation engineers and all this other stuff. So it, it's been fun. I, I know you've done a lot of like tech stuff. So in the past, just because I've known mm -hmm. you for a few years, you, you know, lots of tech, lots of engineering. Like how is this mm -hmm. transition into biosciences? Wow. Well, uh, the bios the biosciences part was hard. I've been very fortunate because like, you know, we go back all the way back to the, the aerotech <laughs> days and we worked in engineering. So, and a lot of our engineering is manufacturing. So because I cut my teeth in engineering, recruiting for manufacturing, I understood at least where these people fit into the manufacturing process. Okay. So I could leverage that experience into my recruiting. Um, but outside of that, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be honest, biotech was, it was, it was, it's so much fun to learn about with the people that I, not only am I working with daily, but the people that I'm talking to, trying to recruit, Obviously, I'm not calling out any of those people because I don't want to get them in trouble, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're working with these other amazing biotech companies and just, um, you know, consumer packaged goods companies that have a lot of chemicals or science behind it. And you, you start talking to them and you hear about what these people are able to create and have in their brain to how to, to work, it, it becomes so much fun to recruit when you hear people and the way they can talk about that stuff. I think you actually also just kind of like hit a point uh, that I think is super important that most recruiters don't, I, I think do properly, is they don't really learn and become passionate about the different teams and programs and projects that they're supporting. I think that's a huge thing. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I always, I always, when I train people and, and I think you and I, it's probably part of it is this aerotech world that we come <laughs> from, but I always train people. I always say, well, while, while you're recruiting for this, right, we're trained to recruit to fill this role. I said, you have to now learn how to recruit for this company. So to do that, you have to learn everything you possibly can about this company, this industry and what this industry is trying to do. So I find myself, um, I find myself now like, I'll pick up these other companies that are working with mycology, which is what the MICA stands for is for okay. mycology short. Cause okay. most of the time when people see MICA works, they're like, that sounds like a workplace, like a workspace, <laughs> not, not mycology. We work. So I start, yeah. Right. So I start working, uh, I start reading about those because you get excited about what these people do. And you also want to, you know, it's like talking to an engineer about, recruiting recruiting a, a software engineer that's working in python and you, and you think it's a snake still right like you want to be able to at least understand what they're trying to accomplish with that program so yeah i agree with you i think it's so important for us as recruiters to to learn what they're trying to accomplish and why the why behind it which is which is so much fun do you have any like interesting stories uh, either supporting uh, my coworks or something else recently that just an interesting way how you found the candidate and got that candidate across the finish line for, to make that placement? Yeah, so it actually just happened. Um, we just got the signed offer letter. So it's so exciting for me. Um, it's for, the, yes, that is the biggest part that we all know. And it, and it was for one of these distinguished scientists that we're working on. So I was working on what was called a fermentation scientist, someone that understands how to add a chemical into some sort of biological product and it ferments, right? Wineries have a lot of them. I know your, your, your ears perked up when I said wineries, <laughs> which I've actually talked to so many scientists from wineries now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So, um, and this person I, I found, we actually found back when we first started this, the whole project back in August. And I talked to him and he was a VP of fermentation for another um, biotech company. And I knew he was too high for this role. But, you know, sometimes you just get this gut feeling as a recruiter, you're like, I have to hold on to this person. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, I just don't know why. So I would just check in with them all the time. And then I was sitting with the chief manufacturing officer and he described this role to me. And normally what we do is we go through this whole calibration. That's one of our, our key um, cornerstones inside of uh, IQ, IQ Talent Partners, is we, we send over calibration lists, roughly 10 candidates, give me, your, give me the barometer, how am I doing kind of thing. Well, he described the role to me that he wanted. And in the back of my head, I said, this is why I needed to keep in touch with this guy. Um, so as soon as he got done describing, I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you this candidate. I want, because this is kind of a new role, you're not sure what to do. I just want you to talk to him. I'm going to use him as my calibration job description, actually. And so I went a little bit different and 
he said, okay, I like this idea because I'm not exactly sure where I wanted to go. He talked to him. It was supposed to be a half hour conversation. Went like 45 minutes. He said, get him with this CEO. I already know he, he already knows he's going to talk to him. Set him up today. And I said, okay. They were supposed to talk for a half hour. He's like, I talked to him for an hour. Get him in touch with this person. And it went from this guy that I talked to at the end of August for a role I didn't have to within two weeks after this role, I actually never saw a written job description. They had an offer and he signed it. It was like crazy, but it's that to me is recruiting in like one fail swoop. <laughs> I, I mean, you, the gut feeling that you have to like utilizing like the hiring managers. I know I actually, you know, utilize hiring managers all the time in the cleared space just mm -hmm. for the fact that, you know, many times I, like what you were saying that you don't know what they're doing and you can't, sometimes can't say it. I definitely don't know sometimes what they're actually doing and I'm not allowed <laughs> to know. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> You're like, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Like, yes, please, please. I don't want that on my computer. I've already had, like, <laughs> have already had to deal with stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not putting this here. <laughs> no, that's phenomenal. But yeah, no, that's a, that's crazy. And I think that's a, something that like, you know, once you, you've been in the industry, like the longer you've been in the industry, the more you've listened to your gut to really make some of those like crazy placements. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the things that I've prided myself as a recruiter is I have kind of switched the mindset of if you're only talking to people to fill one specific role, I think we've missed the mark as recruiters. I think as a recruiter, our job is to be like, okay, about my job is to go out and find a software engineer, a scientist or whatever it is. I should go and find out how many great scientists, how many great engineers I could find because I'm going to learn one. I'm going to learn about what they do, how they do it, become a better advocate for them and what's going on in the marketplace. But then I also become a better business consultant or business partner if you're full-time or whatever to my client by saying, okay, this is what you're describing to me. I've talked to this many people that have done something similar like this. Is that someone that you'd even consider or am I down the wrong way? Um, because if I just say it's so narrow, guess what? I only found this one type of engineer. There might be only one company that can hire that one type of engineer. What am I going to do if that company doesn't want to hire anymore? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just, yeah, it's one of those weird, I guess, everybody kind of falls into their own kind of path as a recruiter with that. I definitely understand that. So uh, this is going to be a, kind of like a two-sided question just because I know uh, there will be newer recruiters or newer people in the industry that will be listening to this. What are some of the things that you think that has helped you become successful in the field? And also to piggyback on that, what are some habits that you believe uh, helped you become successful in recruiting? Yeah, so I would say the biggest thing that helped me um, is not being afraid to pick up the phone. And, and I go back to it to, to every day of the, my life is as a recruiter, just pick up the phone. We always get so concerned about how we're using technology and you're going to hear the words, especially new recruiters or even older recruiters have been doing it. They talk about AI and this tool and everything that's going to help you become better. I'm of the mindset that people still get people jobs. The tool is who helps you get to those people and put those tools in their place. And that's how I'm, that's how I've been successful. It's, it's what I've, I've said. I've always said my tools are just that they're just a tool. No one is going to replace me in this relationship that I build with the candidate. I've always joked. And I said, I'll ask anybody, tell me the one time that LinkedIn has actually got you a job. And they'll try to say, well, I did get a job because I, I found the job on LinkedIn. I said, no, 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 that was the tool that got you the job. <laughs> Who was the person that you spoke to that made you realize that this was the company that you wanted to work for? I don't trust my career with a tool. I don't. I trust it with people and who I talk to. So that would probably be the the, the biggest thing that I've always said. And I still I still remember first days recruiting, you know, when they, they tell you, that, and anybody that's ever worked at Aerotech, you know this, 75 <laughs> calls, they give you the call log and they give you a G2 sheet and they say, go. And you're like, wait, what do I even do? And they're like, don't care. Pick up the phone. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They train by not training, right? So um I still remember that and I was terrified and I still remember um, one of the people I respect greatly that's still with Allegis, Eamon Hamid, he saw one of my call sheets that was very small and he said, not acceptable, get on the phone. And he just wrote it on my sheet and I still remember it. And I was like, all right, well, here we go. Let's pick up the phone. And I picked it up every day as many times as I can. And that's the only way I got better. I think I remember a few nights like leaving the office like eight, nine o'clock at night we get trying to hit my numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was nonstop. 75 phone calls, 75 phone calls, 75 phone calls. And you had to have 25 G2s by the end of the week or something like that. I don't even remember, but it was a lot. 
And it's um, one of the things I think I, what you're talking about, pick up the phone. I, you know, there's less and less recruiters doing that nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. I think that as recruiters, we have so many amazing capabilities with the tools that are around us that we start to rely on them because we see that we're starting to get a little bit of success with them. And I always say, that's great. But the greatest thing about technology is, is that it's technology and it helps you do your job easier and better. It helps you work smarter. But you also have to understand as a recruiter, your ultimate product is people. And people will never change. Human interaction will never change. It's, it's part of the reason why I actually think, and I'm so excited, the, one of the good things that are coming out of COVID, I do believe, is that people are starting to understand the importance of mental health and human interaction. Well, that to me is, that to me is recruiting. It's, inter, it's human interaction. That's how we find out if someone's going to be good for us. It's not, through, it's not through LinkedIn. It's not through the new what Eightfold can do or Connectify or anything like that. Those are fantastic products, but I don't believe that's how people want to get a new job. Yeah, I, I, no. I don't believe it, and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's definitely true. I mean, every job that I've taken, every over, throughout history, it's always been like, you know, what is this mission? What are you going to be supporting? Where are you doing this? And even as you know, as a recruiting business now, like I get excited about the different businesses that I support and their missions. And you know, I, I've every single person I've ever hired, I've always had a phone conversation with. I can't even think of like hiring somebody with no. just <laughs> email yeah. or something of that nature. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going like, I couldn't imagine trying to negotiate with a human being about compensation and never picking up the phone and talking to him about it. Like I would actually get nervous thinking about a situation where that might actually happen. Cause I'd be like, no, I couldn't do it. I want to have a conversation. I want to hear it in their voice. So yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely, I think great advice. And I think that's, you know, Get, go, great advice going into 2021 and pick up the freaking phone and have a conversation. Yeah. Cause what's the worst that's going to happen? You find out they're not right for the job. I, I mean, that's, that's the I, absolute worst. That's might be the best. Find out now. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Like you don't have to submit them and find out that they're going to ghost on your second interview because you never picked up the phone and built a relationship and would have learned that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. It's just, it's just, it's, I watch it with new recruiters and I train a lot of recruiters and I mentor a lot of recruiters and IQ channel partners. And it's the, you know, if their main role is sourcing, I work with them through that and train them through the sourcing part. But if they want to recruit and that's one of the things they want to do, I was like, okay, well, who are you calling today? And I always get this befuddled look because we do it on a video call. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, well, who are you calling? Like, quite frankly, I can program a robot, not trying to be mean, to find the people that you need to talk to. <laughs> like that's the tools that are being created right now right so i need you to be able to find them and talk to them and engage them so yeah well uh one last question it's one of my favorites uh what book or have you recently dug into or what book are you digging into that you think is really making a difference i am going to be the person that says i probably am the worst about reading books to be honest though there's there's just one book that i continuously go back to that actually has helped me in so many relationships and actually helps me tremendously in recruiting and building relationships and recruiting. It sounds silly, but it's the five love languages by Gary Chapman. It's, it's, a good book. it's amazing. <laughs> it, yeah. Like it's a great book. And I, I mean, I can speak volumes to it about how it helps me and my wife all the time and actually our kids and understanding the love languages. But I've started to apply the principles of learning what the, the languages are that my, my re, people that I'm training, the people that I'm working with, my, my, um, yeah, my customer, my candidates, what are their language? What, what speaks to them? Like, that's why I always ask them, like, what's the why? Give me the why and then behind that. And it, and it, and it goes back to those principles, who you are, right? So I, I have to be honest, that's probably the one book that I continue to go back to. Um, no, I, yeah, I got I got to read more. I got to read more. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I got to read more because I'm always reading articles, though. Like, I'm always reading articles about the now it's the biotech space. Like I'm reading nonstop articles about the biotech space. The company that I was recruiting for before, they basically do, they were, uh, they're called symphony.com and they, they basically do encrypted um, messaging. They're an encrypted messaging platform for businesses, specifically banks. So like I started finding myself reading about encryption, which is, I don't know why I was reading about encryption because I didn't understand what they were saying other than my stuff secure, which was even better. <laughs> Well, I mean, that definitely goes into like you understanding your industry. And like we said earlier, like most recruiters aren't doing that like they should. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I need to read more though. I probably should. <laughs> the more I think about it. 
No, but honestly, Five Love Language is a, is a phenomenal book. I actually, you know, now that you mentioned it, I was actually looking at it two days ago. Like, I need to pick this book up again. It's been yeah. a while. And yeah. this is now like, like, you saying this is like the key, like, <laughs> all right, you're I'm like, feeling. <laughs> you're like, prompted, thank you, check mark. <laughs> to-do list. <laughs> Adding to Audible right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fantastic app. I See, that's what I got to do is I got to get more on the Audible app because then I just start listening to these books. Because there's so many times I'm just, sourcing and i could be listening to it while i source i, I it sometimes takes me like if, like if you want a good laugh like an hour to read like 10 pages just because you know squirrel squirrel you know yeah <laughs> a little recruiter bit of like recruiter, life. yep recruiter life <laughs> and uh you know like audible has been like my fix for during the, my runs or if i'm in the car so yeah it's see, a cool I, app i've seen i've seen where you run i would be so distracted i couldn't listen to anything i would just be looking at the scenery of dc the whole time like the pictures you post i'm just blown away i was like yeah i would i could run there i could do that <laughs> but uh hey, hey want to say thank you thank you for participating and uh you know i look forward to uh people listening to this or and people watching this and just you know uh helping them understand the industry better helping them get better um, and, you know, helping them be become successful in what we do. Absolutely. I think this is such a huge uh, area that uh, needs to be focused on. I think that the recruiting industry is gone, has come so far, but I think it's, it's, it's going to continue to be a, uh, a, t a tipping point for recruiters as, as we're coming out of COVID, because I, I, I do believe the way corporate America works and functions is going to be different from here on out, and recruiters need to adjust to that truest words. Well, <laughs> Adam, thank you very much. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you.